I wanted to thank everyone for the viewer, uh, for the views, um, and for the comments, and for the subscriptions, and for the thumbs up. Um, in the last um, maybe three to four months, I've seen a huge uptick in traffic, and I'm not sure what it is. It might be the topics of discussion. Um, it seems like the buzzword nowadays is our, our bull armory or 2011 or double stack 1911 so I've been kind of focusing on 1911s the past couple of years and I am experimenting with my you all know I'm, I'm, I'm chasing my inner child things you know um, I don't necessarily want the most expensive guns out there, uh, but I do like sharing some of the things that I learn about uh, these double stacks. Um, and so, so when I share, I'm just kind of trying to do my part as a as an advocate, right? Uh, but what makes things easier for me and, and more bearable are the fact that people are actually consuming the uh, the content. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I always say that you don't have to, um, um, I'm not doing it for the clicks and you don't have to subscribe or anything. And sometimes I'm being sarcastic when I say, if you don't like 30 minute videos, then go somewhere else. But at the same time, you know, I'd, I'd be stupid to say that I don't want people viewing the, the videos. I mean, that's the whole reason I'm doing them. So, so again, thank you. Um, and, and please uh, let me know um, if you guys want me to kind of, you know, give me some suggestions on what you would like to see. Now, granted, I don't, I don't get T and E guns, so uh, gun makers don't send me anything. I haven't been asking, but, but I'm thinking mm, it wouldn't hurt to do that, right? Um, so, so I, if I see enough people kind of wanting that, maybe I could start giving that a spin. Um, so, so let me know what you, what you guys want to see, how you guys want to see it. Give me some suggestions, um, and help me, I don't know, grow things a bit. Um, I can't promise I can follow them, follow them all, um, but but if you give me some suggestions, I'm going to consider, you know, whatever you whatever you give me. Um, but thank you again. So I did a 30 minute video yesterday of this gun. Um, I know people don't like 30 minute videos, so we're going going to attempt to make a a 10 to 15 minute video, and we're already at the three and a half minute mark, so we need to get a move on. Uh, this gun is clear. But I will show clear. It's nothing, you know. There's no mag in the in the gun. Um, so this is a TSUS. This is a carry um, nine millimeter double stacked 1911. Um, you will not be incorrect if you call it a 2011 because it's 2011 patterned. Um, it is not para patterned like the Rock Island Armory. Uh, uh, 1911s, uh, the double stack ones. Uh, people like to confuse those. Um, they, those are not true 2011s. This is a true 1911. Um, so I bought this maybe um, a couple of weeks ago, two to three weeks ago. Um, I've taken it to the range twice this week already. I have 317 rounds shot through it. Um, a couple of things that I noticed right from the box, you know, is the trigger. Uh, the triggers, uh, I wouldn't say heavy, but it's not light either. Um, I measured it at right around a bit under five pounds and a very, a hair over five pounds. I did two measurements. Uh, but I don't think that's really a concern. The concern is the fact that it has a, it, it, at least out of the box, it had a stiff wall. Um, 
and I noticed it right off the bat. Um, I took it to the range and I had that wall gave me problems. It wasn't the weight, it wasn't the weight of the trigger, um, it was the wall. Um, so with 317 rounds through the gun so far, um, the wall has softened up quite a bit. Um, and the trigger is actually lightened up by almost a, uh, a full pound. Um, I did two uh, measurements of it last night and it was at the the low four pound mark. Uh, so, so it didn't take long, but uh, not only did I shoot the 317 rounds out of it, the first night when I, when I had issues with that wall, I came home um, and just, you know, made sure that there was no ammo in the room and I just kept pulling the trigger. I kept racking it, pulling the trigger, trying to soften that wall up. So um, even though it only has 317 rounds, I'd probably pull that trigger another 100, 100 times. So uh, it, it softened up quite a bit. Um, the sights are not something that, that I'm used to. It's got a, a rear notch. Um, so I don't know how to use the notch and I was shooting maybe two inches low of where I was trying to aim at. Um, that persisted throughout the whole range session of the first night. It was frustrating for me. So I think it was a combination of me not being used to the sights and the trigger wall. Uh, so with the trigger wall, wall broken down a, a bit and softened up, um, I went to the range again um, on, I think it was Wednesday. And uh, I was actually able to have some pretty tight groupings. Um, the sights still give me problems, so I'm not sure if they, if I need an alteration of sights. Um, the cool thing is, is the rear are uh, Glock patterned. So uh, I can use anything that, that would fit a Glock in this gun. Um, and both of the sights are, they're driftable. So they are dovetail, both of them. Uh, so if I have to, I can, I mean, I can't control elevation on this, but I can drift them to the left or right, but that's not what I need. I, I actually need, I'm not sure if it's just a, the front side's too, a, a little bit tall for me. Uh, there's something about it that, that, that was giving me difficulty. And I know it was the gun because uh, on Wednesday, I think on both nights, I, I, you know, I carry my bull armory. And after I would, I, I had problems with the, uh, with this gun, I switched to the bull armory um, that first night and uh, was actually hitting where I needed to hit. So um, again, the differences are drastic between those two guns, uh, but uh, at least I can say it wasn't, it wasn't all on me, you know, the, the shooter, because I could pick up another gun and I could shoot it fine, right? Uh, so again, it was probably, probably the wall and the sights that were giving me issues. Um, the second, Rain session, I had less of an issue. Um, the gun is very nice. It's very soft shooting. Um, I would say at least a third of those rounds, probably close to half, are or hollow points. Um, out of those 317, there was only one issue, uh, and I think it was a failure to feed. Um, it was a weird issue. I was shooting JHP and I. I'm not sure what brand it was uh, because I was shooting assorted ammo. It was all mixed up. Um, but I tried to pull the trigger. It wouldn't pull. And I looked and it looked like I had a stovepipe. But then when I looked at the round, the round hadn't been fired yet. Uh, the, it was sticking up projectile first up in the air uh, between the slide and the, and the barrel. Uh, so it got caught up in there so it was so weird um and because of that the brass was pinched but i was actually you know i put it back in the magazine and 
I chambered it, it chambered it without issue, and it shot without issue. So I'm not sure if that's considered a failure. And if it is considered a failure, where does, where does it lie? Magazine, gun, ammo? I don't know, because I wasn't able to replicate it. Uh, so call it a fluke, and I won't count it as a fail. Um, well, I'll count it as a fail, but I, I still don't know where where the failure is. Uh, but anyways, um, gun is good. Um, the tolerances have loosened up on the slide a bit, uh, but I, I'm not. I wasn't looking for a super tight fitment with a seven hundred dollar um, budget minded in nineteen eleven uh, or twenty eleven. Um, I didn't notice anything significant with the gun. Nothing bad. Um, it ate everything. One thing I do notice, and I'm, I'm glad I noticed it, is so if you look here on this this thumb safety, and then you look compare it to the one that's on the other side. This one is sharp. Um, like they didn't blend it. This one's blended, and on my single stack Tesis, I have a five inch. Uh, 45 um, that thumb safety usually cuts into my hand and I end up with some bruising and uh, broken skin um, I was expecting the same thing with this until I saw that they had attempted to blend that one I'm curious as to why they didn't blend both sides but maybe it's not needed because I didn't notice an issue with anything and I was shooting some of that ammo was self-defense ammo um, it had big boom um, so I mean I'm super happy with the gun thus far. Uh, we have an optic on the way. Um, I did not want to buy another $300 plus uh, Holosun. Um, I didn't even want to spend 200 bucks on, on an optic. Uh, I wanted something that uh, would match the character of this gun. Uh, dependable, but cheap. And so I went with uh, Siley. Uh, and so I have a Siley uh, optic coming on the way. Um, another thing I wanted to mention that I didn't do another video, the longer video, is I took this off because I saw a lot of people complaining saying that it wouldn't come off. Um, saying that it was uh, wedged in place. Um, I did have a problem getting mine off. I took it off. But uh, after I took it off, what I did was I used a mallet. A rubber mallet and I kind of hit the side a couple a bit until it broke uh, I guess it was sealed in place by a uh, um, preservative. It wasn't oil. Uh, so a preservative that, that they used to kind of ship the gun from overseas to, overseas to here. And so it was creating a vacuum seal. So uh, I think that's what everyone is thinking uh, when, when they say that it's too tight fit or, or it's wedged in place, that the tolerances are too tight. I don't think it's that. I think it's the fact that there's usually oil under there when you first get the gun and you know that oil kind of vacuum seals that whole thing and so it, even though you unscrew the, the bolts um, that, that it's staying in place uh, from the vacuum seal so um, I don't think that's a concern um, that is it we're at the right under 14 minutes and i think i covered all of the high points uh with the gun um as much as i could with uh you know me kind of setting a time limit on myself right so what i'm gonna try and do is i'm gonna look at both videos and i might post both of them uh i'll post a short one for the people that have short attention spans and they might not consider 14 minutes short, but I am, right? Uh, for me, that's short. And for people who want that extra amount of detail, I can go ahead and crunch that 30-minute video. It's just another 15 minutes. Um, I talk about the same things, except I go into a little bit more detail. Um, okay, that is it.